When we think of big American internal combustion engines, we often envision hulking powerhouses with eight cylinders or more, engaging in an eternal conquest of cubic displacement. These engines are the heart and soul of American muscle cars from the late 1960s and beyond. However, the roots of this American love affair with large, powerful engines can be traced back to aviation rather than drag strips. Enter the Allison V1710, a remarkable engine that conquered both the skies and the drag strip. To understand the story of the Allison V1710, we need to travel back in time before World War II, when the United States was striving to prove itself in the world of aircraft manufacturing. The company's founder, James A. Allison, built his business by crafting precision race car components in Speedway, Indiana, not far from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Allison's work played a crucial role in early Indy 500 races. During World War I, his company contributed to the development of the Liberty V12 aero engine, which, while innovative, became obsolete after the armistice of 1918. However, Allison didn't stop there. His company produced inverted L12 engines, which featured early adaptations of geared superchargers, showing an appetite for innovation in aero engine design. As the 1920s rolled on and the Liberty L12 fell out of favor, the race was on to build the next generation of high-output American aero engines, powered by the U.S. Army's hyper-engine program. Initially, Allison's team began work on the X-4250, an air-cooled 24-cylinder engine in X formation. However, this design didn't get past the concept stage. The initial purpose for Allison's engines was to power the U.S. Navy's Akron-class airships, Tragically, the USS Macron and the USS Akron airships that were supposed to receive Allison's engines both crashed before the engines were ready. These airships met the demise with German Maybach engines on board. Following James A. Allison's passing, his company went through several ownership changes before General Motors acquired it and bankrolled engine research, leading to the development of the V-1710. Now the V-1710 inherited design elements from Allison's concept airship engines. Key features such as the engine cylinders, single overhead camshaft, and ethylene glycol liquid cooling system gave the V1710 its distinct characteristics. Designed with a displacement of 1,710 cubic inches or 28 liters with 12 cylinders arranged at 65 degrees, the V1710 was one of the first aero engines to breach the 1,000 horsepower mark. In essence, this engine laid the foundation for American high-output aero engines. Now, the V1710 was modular, allowing for various configurations. An engine core could be adapted with secondary hardware, like forced induction, to increase performance. Now, the V1710's maiden flight took place on December 14, 1936, in a consolidated XA-11A monowing fighter. This engine quickly became the standard liquid-cooled inline engine for emerging advanced piston fighters of the U.S. Army's Air Corps and Navy. From the Curtis B-40 Warhawk to the Lockheed B-38 Lightning and Bell B-39 Era Cobra, these fighters relied on various V-1710 configurations during World War II. The engine's modular design made it simple to adapt for forced induction, a feature that greatly enhanced its performance. Notably, the General Electric B5 turbo supercharger connected to this engine by a geared mechanism and using residual exhaust gases for forced induction was employed on models of the B38 Lightning. Despite its strengths at lower altitudes, the V1710 displayed limitations at higher altitudes where Axis fighters and bombers often operated. Engine knocking and other issues at altitude impacted the performance of the engine. Even at altitudes between 20,000 and 30,000 feet, the 1710 was described as underperforming by some pilots, a significant disadvantage against German and Japanese fighters. The engine's difficulties included maintaining the proper fuel-air mixture, which gave aviation mechanics numerous headaches, especially before the widespread use of fuel injection. But this is a car channel, so why are we learning about planes? Well, I'm getting to it. You see, after World War II, numerous surplus V-1710 V-12 engines entered the civilian aircraft market. These engines caught the attention of hard rodders in both the automotive and powerboat scenes. These enthusiasts recognized the V-1710's potential in applications beyond aviation. Race car driver Art Afrons 
famous for the green monster land speed record car, initially employed a V1710 in his pursuit of speed. The engine later found its way into speedboats, unlimited hydroplane races and massive tractor pullers. Jim Little, a drag racing legend, installed a V1710 into his 1932 Ford Coupe, making it one of the most iconic drag cars of the early 60s. Little's head out of the top creation ran a quarter mile in 9.39 seconds at 163 miles per hour. The most famous automotive application of the V1710 was the Quad AL, a monstrous quad engine dragster with a V1710 engine powering each axle. This project remained at the mock-up stage, but symbolizes the engine's presence in the drag racing world. By the way, I think this is the craziest drag car ever. Prove me wrong in the comments if you know of any other drag cars crazier than this thing. Anyways, the V1710 has circled back into aviation as well. Today, it powers vintage warbirds when their original engines are difficult to procure. To end it off, the Allison V1710 is an engine that truly conquered the skies and, well, everything else. I mean, it was used on drag racing cars, power boats, it was used everywhere, displaying its versatility across various applications, from aviation to land speed records to drag racing and even speedboat racing. It's a testament to American engineering and innovation, leaving a legacy that continues to impress and inspire today. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you think of this insane 28 liter V12 engine. And then also, like I asked, let me know if you know of any other crazy drag cars that's like almost on that level, because I would, I would love to make a cool video on that. Yeah, at the end of the video, please let me know what you thought of the video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you almost probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?